Now you have to be living under a rock if you haven't already seen the photo right behind me. He's Parag Agarwal, he's 37. He's been named the CEO of Twitter. The internet can't seem to get enough of this man and the news is being circulated on WhatsApp, shared on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, even by those who mostly stick to sharing only selfies and OOTD. That's short for Outfit of the Day, OOTD. So what's the story of Parag Agarwal? What does he bring to the table? What explains the internet's newfound obsession with him? Agarwal is an alumnus of IIT Bombay. He, com he completed his PhD in computer science from Stanford University. He interned with Microsoft, Yahoo and AT&T Labs. He joined Twitter in the year 2011. In 2018, he was appointed as the chief technical officer and now he sits at the helm of the billion dollar company. In his farewell message, the outgoing CEO Jack Dorsey wrote, and I'm quoting, Parag has been behind every critical decision that helped turn this company around. He's curious, probing, rational, creative, demanding, self-aware and humble. He leads with heart and soul and is someone I learn from daily. My trust in him as a CEO is bone deep. So with that, Parag Agarwal goes on to join the club of Indian origin CEOs in Silicon Valley. The list already includes the CEOs of Google, Microsoft, Adobe, IBM, and Palo Alto Networks. Agarwal's entry to the club is being celebrated by Indians around the world. It's being seen as a testimony to Indian talent. The chairman of India's Mahindra Group, Anand Mahindra, is calling this the Indian CEO virus. One, he proudly says, the world has no vaccine against. Very well. Tesla CEO Elon Musk said, the United States benefits greatly from Indian talent. Yes, it does. But does India benefit from this talent? Should India be celebrating the migration of this talent? The fact that its talented women and men are serving American companies, helping another country's economy grow. The fact that some of India's top talent are choosing to take up jobs abroad instead of staying back. Should India be celebrating the fact that 600,000 Indians gave up their passports in the last five years, 600,000? There's no doubt that Indians make great leaders. The Southern New Hampshire University has also found out the secret recipe. One of its studies says, Indian managers have a quote-unquote paradoxical blend of genuine personal humility, humility and intense professional will. Very interesting observation. Can this skill be honed at home? Do you know the percentage of Chinese-born CEOs at the Silicon Valley? Zero. But 13.8% of Chinese startups are unicorns. The country has the second highest share of unicorns in the world, and it is second only to the United States. What if more Indian talents stayed back? What if they helped promote entrepreneurial environment at home here in India? What if they helped the Indian economy grow? Could we too have come up with a Google or a Twitter then? Clearly we Indians make great leaders. So what is stopping us from making great companies here in India? Is it because the best of our talent is choosing working outside? I'm not disagreeing that having Indians lead big American tech firms does send a strong message. It does. It adds to India's growing soft power. But is it of any real value? Google, for example, has an Indian CEO. Under Sundar Pichai's leadership, Google is fighting India in court. It is also abusing the dominant position of its Android operating system in India and forcing mobile companies in India to pre-install Google apps. Google is killing competition in India. Google is also violating India's competition law. All of this under the leadership of a Sundar Pichai. Here's something we may be forgetting. Having an Indian CEO does not mean a company becomes pro-India or starts hiring more Indians or opens more offices in India. These are American firms. They run on American values. They put profit first. And those leading these firms cannot, in all fairness, afford to carry any sense of bias into their office. They make no difference to an employee in India or a fresher looking for a job in India or help the company improve its conduct in India. Many of you may point out that when India was devastated by the second wave of the Wuhan virus, Sundar Pichai and Satya Nadella offered to help India. Yes, they did. But so did companies that were not led by Indian CEOs. My point is very simple. Having an Indian CEO head an American firm is great, but it does not make much of a difference for India. 
Parag Agarwal is taking charge of Twitter at a very crucial time. Will he be able to solve Twitter's crisis with India? Will the social media platform abide by Indian laws? Will it respect free speech and shun fake news? If not, Indians may want to rethink before clapping this appointment. We wish him all the very best. Vyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.